and I'm really struggling with pricing it. Every time a new client comes in, you must raise your prices. I think I want to focus on mindset a little bit. My name is Maria. I'm starting out as a graphic designer and I have a small illustration business. I would like to raise the prices, but also I have a fear of losing all of my clients. When you look at the money that you've made off of this business, was, is the majority off of repeat business or is the majority off of one-off projects that where the person doesn't come They're back? They're repeat. Okay. It's difficult to raise your prices on repeat customers. Mm -hmm. have, you try, have you raised your prices on new customers? I have. They still complain, all of them. <laughs> they still complain? Yes. So raising your prices on existing customers is just a hard sell because the customer, the client, is used to getting what they're getting for that price. And when you start saying, well, my prices went up because they just, they, they don't, all they hear is, what's the deal? I'm used to this. I want what I want. And every time a new client comes in, you must raise your prices. You, I mean, must raise your prices every time because guess what happens? New client comes in, you raise your price. Next month, another one, another one, another one, another one. This time next year, you're charging double, triple, quadruple what you charge today. Because every time you raise your price, you're going to have, I think, a value conversation. Where when the person is commissioning you for this work, you're gonna be asking them, what is it about this project that's gonna solve your problem? That's my thought, is to see yourself, again, you're gonna hear me say this over and over, Position yourself as an expert, not as a service provider. But let's say a repeat client and uh, he has already got, let's say, four paintings at the fixed price that he has had before. And then he comes back and like the, the painting is still the same. It was good quality, it is good quality. And how do you explain that the value is so much more? That is why you should cost more now. So here's a couple maybe well, I can think of one quick, easy trick. Experts are busy. So your excuse when you want to raise your price on that repeat customer is, sorry, I'm really busy. It's going to be a rush charge. I'm going to have to work over the weekend. I'm going to have to bring in other artists to get this done. So the price does this. And so what you're doing is you're restricting your supply, mm -hmm. which causes the price to go up. Simple trick. The way that I always qualify a, or a, a, a project is I want to know the, this is, here we go, more alliteration, sorry. Dollars, don't do it, don't do it. I know, it's, it's, it's easy though, it's, it makes it easy to remember. Dollars, decision maker, and deadline. So when, I, before I even start talking about price, I'm asking the person, what's your deadline? When are you gonna make this decision? Who's the decision maker? When are you gonna award? When is the thing due? And if somebody tells me, you know, I don't know, maybe this, this Christmas or something, I say, call me in November. Kind of like play the um, I don't really need you type role, you know what I mean? Yeah. Would you do that with a client that you actually want to work with? So this, this um, but I really want to work with this client, um, really doesn't serve you very well. And it ultimately doesn't even serve the client well because the more available you are, the more responsive you are, the more bend over backwards, do whatever you want. You actually compromise the budget they're gonna give you, the quality of the work that you're gonna produce for them, the, your ability to solve a bigger, deeper problem. Like that all goes out the window when you say, I'll do anything to work with you. So I think playing hard to get is actually part of what puts you in a position to create a bigger and better result in the long run. And you're in the long run, right? You're not just like, if you, gotta, if you gotta eat and you need the check, I get it. Sometimes that's the decision you have to make. But if you're trying to build a career, yeah, I would, I, would, I would hold your ground. And know that in the long run, you're gonna build relationships with better clients who are really looking to, to you to solve bigger and badder problems. I think I wanna focus on mindset a little bit. Normally I'd be like, do this, do this, and you'll make four times as much money. And maybe if we have time, we'll get into that. <laughs> but I also want to try to involve you guys, because I know you guys are really smart. 
Um, see if you guys already have the answers. What do you think some of the problems are? Maria told us a complex set of issues that she's having, and I think that's wonderful because there are a lot of potential solutions to the problem. What's the biggest driver in price? There's two things. Two things to drive price. What is it? Supply, supply and demand. demand. Supply and demand. So when there's a lot of supply and little demand, the price is going to go down. <coughs> so this is not even about magic or deception. It's just really about controlling supply and demand. So when, when Banksy makes a painting, there's one painting. If you want it, you're going to pay a million dollars for it. The question is, how do we get there? And there's lots of things to figure out. And there's this idea of mindset, and I get it, that we, we feel bad when we raise prices. We seek approval from others, and we feel happy when, when clients <coughs> like our work and they want to give us more work. So much so that we kind of repress our own desires and what, what it is that we want to do. We repress our own values. We got to get over this part of it, OK? I have a theory. The theory is that most creative people love to do what it is that they do. We derive so much joy. If you love comic books and you're an illustrator, man, I would pay you to illustrate it, right? You don't even have to pay me. If you like making logos or hand lettering, you would do that almost for free. Now, I imagine, I'm not sure, if Maria were to negotiate on my behalf, she would probably be a pit bull, would you? <laughs> and why would you do that for me, a total stranger to you? Like, if Joel comes in and is like, Chris, we want to hire you to do a motorcycle <laughs> illustration, I'm like, okay, Maria, can you negotiate for me, please, with Joel? What would you say to Joel? <laughs> Seriously, what would you say to him? I'm not, I, I don't even take these calls, my, yeah, exactly. my agent. Just do it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Show me you got what it takes, please. I'm not even here. Chris. I, I don't even take these calls. Yeah, exactly. I know, I'm just gesturing to that, that guy over there. I want to hire your artist. Okay. To create something for me. Um, my artist would be happy to work for you because he's really into motorcycles. Okay. And uh, how much? Um, what size and range of usage are we talking about? Well, I don't know. I've got uh, I've got five hundred dollars. What can he What can he produce for me? Well, not much. <laughs> hmm. Um, well, what? Um, Okay, so let me just level with you. I need a really great illustration for my lobby entrance okay. at my dealership. Okay. And by the way, this piece is going to look really great in his portfolio. <laughs> oh, you went there. <laughs> right? Because I have a Harley Davidson dealership, and you know, his, his work is going like, to have my, the Harley brand name on it. So this is like, kind of a big deal. But and I'm talking to a lot of different artists. Right. Because everyone wants to work for Harley Davidson. But, so, um, uh -huh. so does that maybe uh, increase the, your interest, you know, your interest in the project? Well, he's very busy working on other projects. Like he's just got this uh, project for Honda and uh, a Ducati. Right. And uh, he's just participated in this uh, world Ducati week. <laughs> so he already has the exposure and um, um, what would be your budget for this project? Hmm. Well, if I could, if I could find $2,000, do you think this would be enough for, th for this type of a commission? <laughs> <laughs> Say whatever now you want. Now we got to teach your anchoring no, say, Yeah, yeah, say, say whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a good start. Uh, I should talk to Chris, and then I'll get back to you. OK, perfect. Man, this is uh, just you good job. OK, all right. So let me ask you a couple of questions. How did you feel emotionally when you were having this conversation? Good. Why? Well, because I know that you're going to do a great job for him. I can't even draw. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? But I want to talk about something here. See, so here's the weird thing. We have no relationship. Like, we don't know each other, right? Except for on the internet. We don't. I'm not saying that like a negative thing. But she is more willing. Maria is more willing to fight for me and my money. I'm nothing to her. But put herself in the same situation. Oh, oh my God, $500? Let's do this. Rock and roll, baby. Right? So you're more brave for an imaginary relationship that doesn't even exist. 
Spend some of that energy on yourself. You are worth it. You are worth way more than that. Do you believe me? I do. Okay. So this is a, a, a trick that I learned from my psychotherapist. She asked me to imagine how I would treat a child, like my son. And then I would give this son advice, this imaginary person. Imagine that you would take better care of an imaginary person than yourself. Who would do that? So what we have to learn is there's an inner child, an inner Maria, an inner girl that you would take much better care of than what you're allowing others to do to you. I'll just give you two letters, two of the most unused letter combinations that artists and creative people have at their, what's that? No. Yes. <laughs> no is the answer, but yes is it. No, just like no. You don't have to explain yourself. Just say no. Okay, so Joel says $500. You just say, <laughs> no, this is not gonna work, Joel. I can't get Chris to get on the phone for less than 2000 He won't even show up to a lunch meeting unless it's gonna be 20000 You just say no, and you say it with a smile, like, I'm not offended by this. It's totally okay, we're just talking about business, right? And also to understand, we don't have to feel guilty about charging for our work. Now, people want to be appreciated for the work, right? Everybody wants to be appreciated. So I want you to think of as, it's not my idea, every dollar bill that you get as a thank you note. The more dollar bills you get, the more they really appreciate your work. I, I want you to uncouple the work from framing and all these other services. Let them deal with that. That's not your problem. You're an artist. An artist is not worrying about the framing and all that kind of stuff, okay? Here's the craziest piece of advice I can give you, and you'll make more money than you thought possible. All you have to do is to double your price tomorrow. So your price right now is 300 and some odd dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna tell you to ask for 600, no framing, and don't even explain it. Okay, if they don't like it, it's fine. Move on with your life. I look at the detail on the work that you put into this. It must take you some time to do. It's not like me where I can hit command, copy, paste, and sell that to the client. <laughs> Yours actually takes talent, skill, and energy, and time. You're selling yourself too short. And if you're ever in doubt, just remember you're negotiating for me, and everything will be okay. Okay? Thank you. See what happens. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.